Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is the day after Jamel Charlo regained the 154-pound title from Tony Harrison. Let's talk about that fight, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say I've read some articles on the fight after having watched the fight and you know I wasn't keeping a scorecard round by round but to me from this seat I thought it was clear that Tony Harrison was winning the fight at the time of the stoppage. Now before I go further let me congratulate Jamel Charlo right he did what you're supposed to do he got a fight against the champ and he won it right he also showed a lot of patience the stoppage didn't come until something like the eleventh round right and so and he was physically prepared for the fight right he came in he was in shape um, he was serious about his business and he went about it so I give him a lot of credit but this fight is a very important fight for people who handicap fights to watch. Right? I believe you need to track down this video because it's very contrasting styles. Although the two guys are roughly the same age, right? Tony Harrison fights like the much older fighter. Right? Dare I say even after the loss Tony Harrison strikes me, and this is my own bias, right? You have yours. Uh, Tony Harrison strikes me as the more advanced fighter, the more skilled fighter, right? Make no mistake, Jamal Charlo is the better athlete, and that's why this fight is so important, because boxing has different parts, right? There's the skill part the ability to break another man's rhythm right very important part of boxing take the other guy out of his game take away his tools have him resetting changing your own rhythm that's what counter punching's all about right you read the other guy's punches and you know when to throw your punches when the other guy's exposed you see that there's going to be an exchange between you and the other man and you make sure to get your punches off first to throw the other guy off his game plan. Right? Punch selection, you throw, you have your combination time to the point where you can throw a left hand to the other guy's body with regularity without consequence to you. That's what Tony Harrison does the entire fight. Right? He comes in with it. He comes in with a jab. The jab's the rhythm disruptor. He he comes in with a jab and hits Charlo with jabs repeatedly in the fight. Then when Charlo jumps in, forget about Charlo's right hand, right? Charlo's a guy who jumps in. It's kind of like a, an ambush fighter, although this fight, he's in the pocket more than the first fight. But Charlo jumps in, you never had to worry about his right hand, did you? Tony Harrison took that away from him. Right? Harrison's jabs in the way on some of the jump-ins. Because Charlo's trying to throw the right hand over the jab. Right? Harrison has Charlo guessing most of the fight. Let me also say too that after Harrison would hit with the right hand, um, with the jab, left hand, right? And after Charlo jumped in and had his right hand neutralized, you notice that at the end of their interactions, Tony would be able to just lean over and throw that left hand to the body. He's close on Charlo and Charlo just couldn't stop it. Right? The problem for Harrison 
is that boxing is athletic as well, right? You have to have the reflexes. You have to have the athletic ability. Charlo is able to move much better than Harrison. So you had the interesting situation in this fight of Harrison, the guy who isn't as much of an athlete as his opponent, on his front foot walking down Charlo throughout the fight. Right? You, you notice, too, that Harrison was so skilled that much of Charlo's game did not matter. Right? Let me just say this, too. I know some of you feel that I've been unfair to Charlo. I didn't make a pre-fight video for this fight, but I did for their first fight. And I thought, I picked Harrison in that pre-fight video... I made a post-fight video talking about why Harrison won that fight. It's the same reasons why he was winning this fight. It's because Harrison is much more surgical than Charlo, right? Charlo has a lot of movement going on, has a lot of energy. Unfortunately, it has the same end point, wide punches, right? He comes in and he's trying to get you. To fall for his rhythm. Then if you guess wrong. Right? If you're thinking, oh, let me block the right hand. And he comes in and he throws a left hook. Then you're finished. Right? That's his game. So he's fighting an older soul. The guys are chronologically the same age. But I'm just telling you, Harrison is just much more thought out. He's fighting an older soul who didn't fall into Charlo's rhythm. That's a big part of not only his game, that's a big part of his brother's game. Right? The same problems, same problems that Jamal Charlo at 160 had against Matt Korobov. His brother had against Tony Harrison. In other words... The guys have a lot of movement. They're jumping around and stuff like that. If you don't buy it, if you don't fall for it, if you understand that this guy is going to come in and lunge in and he's going to try to throw a winging right hand, right? We'll call it a straight right, but it's wide. If you understand that he's going to jump in and try to throw a left hook, And if you have your hands up, which is what Harrison does, and if you keep the proper distance, so Charlo has to bridge a gap between the two of you, and if you accentuate that distance, you figure out his timing and you make the adjustment so that your jab creates the distance. Your jab is knocking the guy before the guy starts his routine. Right? That's what Charlo's doing. It's a it's a script. Right? He has he has a few moves and he jumps around to kind of hide it. He's hiding moves with movement. Right? If you can figure out his movement and not fall for his rhythm and faints, you can outbox him to the point where you're hitting him repeatedly with jabs. When he comes in, you're able to duck under the right hand. Right hand's not able to land flush. And you're able to get close enough to him. So with the same hand you were just jabbing him with, you're hitting him in the side with that left hand. Now, what makes fighters great is the ability to do just that. Right? One of the things that Lomachenko is able to do in getting guys to quit, think about it, many men have literally just flat out quit against Lomachenko, is Lomachenko breaks their rhythm, which I believe is what Tony Harrison did here. Right, I thought Harrison clearly wins 
a whole stretch of rounds in this fight. And I know that's not the way the judges saw it. That's why I'm making this video. I suspect that's not the way many people saw it. I understand on the punch count, on the telecast, they keep telling you how close the punch count was. Right? Just to understand, Tony Harrison is controlling the tempo, at least to me. Tony's jab is an unsolvable problem for Jamel Charlo. I mean, it's just unsolvable. Tony's ability to get inside and throw that left to the body, then to back away, uh, all I could say is that was a structural advantage Tony had. Right? Charlo's moving a lot, but Charlo's not landing more punches. You got the feeling Charlo was expending more energy. Now, I believe a Lomachenko, a Terrence Crawford, they would know, and this is why Charlo wins the fight, quite frankly, they would know that they have a tool in their toolkit that if used the right way, would give Tony Harrison a lot of problems, right? And Jamel Charlo has it. It's his counter left hook, right? His left hook seems to be his best punch. You'll notice when he hurts Tony badly, right? After Tony's been dropped twice in the fight, once early, once in the 11th round. When Tony gets off the canvas, you'll notice that when Charlo runs over, he's throwing predominantly left hooks. It's moments like that where you figure out what a fighter's best punch is. Right? The knockdown in the 11th round, the first one. Tony messes up on the angle, has a hand up. Charlo comes inside. Right? Charlo's been throwing the left hook wide all night. He throws it straighter than normal, gets inside Tony's guard, drops Tony, right? The difference between Jamel Charlo and a Lomachenko or a Terrence Crawford is that it took Charlo 12 rounds of the first fight into the 11th round of the second fight to figure out how to change the angle on that left hook so that it hit Tony flush. In other words, Charlo is jumping around, doing a lot of stuff. Now I know against less seasoned fighters, fighters who aren't as skilled as a Tony Harrison, they might get caught up in the moment and try to jump with them. Right? That's what Jamel Charlo wants you to do. He's bringing in a lot of energy and he's, he's moving and stuff like that. The skilled fighters reduce the movement. You know, in terms of their reaction, they reduce the movement to what's relevant. Right? Charlo can cover a lot of ground with that right hand. He definitely can. Harrison takes the steam out of it by throwing a jab. Getting that jab off at key parts of their encounters. Right? Lennox Lewis on the telecast talks about how Harrison's getting the jab off first. Now Lennox is sitting ringside and he's figuring it all out. Right? Jamel Charlo didn't. He's still making the same mistakes. Let me just say, too, and there was a tragedy on the telecast because it was excellent. Charlo's trainer, very successful, Derek James, at one point starts to talk to Charlo. And you could tell Charlo's an emotional guy, right? He can't even sit down and calmly look at his trainer and, you know, have the corner move in slow motion. That's not who he is. He's amped up for this fight. Right? He and Tony don't really get along. 
right? Tony took his title. It's the only loss he has in his career. So Derek James is trying to talk to him. If I heard Derek James right, because unfortunately the mic was muddied on the telecast, right? With Charlo looking away like this, you would have thought Derek James was a complete stranger to his own fighter, right? Even though you know Derek James is a huge part of Charlo's success. Derek James is trying to tell him how to deal with Tony Harrison's jab. Understand the jab late in this fight. The second fight between the two guys is still a problem for Charlo. A guy with movement. Right? How's that possible? You're looking at Charlo's hand speed, you're looking at his movement, and you're thinking to yourself, why can't this guy just focus? Right? If you have his left hook, and it's a great punch, if you have Charlo's left hook, if you understand that at certain times there are opportunities to throw that left hook as a counter, where Tony, who's not the athlete Charlo is, might not be able to block it. I get the feeling if we had a Terrence Crawford with that kind of weapon and with that ability to make adjustments, if we had a Floyd Mayweather, right, with the ability to make adjustments to read an opponent and then to execute on it, if a Crawford or a Mayweather figured out that he has an opportunity at times if he circles and uses lateral movement, right? If he dodges Tony's jab, actually bends at the waist a bit and moves a bit differently than Charlo, who's fighting high in my opinion, I get the feeling Tony would have been in trouble much earlier much earlier right but here you have a guy in his late 20s with a bit too much movement right and not enough adjustment ability in other words you know Charlo is so excited by the moment he couldn't even talk to his trainer coherently so that 11th round, understand on my card, all Tony has to do is finish the fight. And I would say, gee, how could they take his title on this performance, right? Now I admit again, I wasn't scoring it round by round, but I thought Harrison had control of the fight. I know on the judges' scorecards, they had Charlo ahead. Okay, this is a situation again where I disagree with the judges. But my point to you is don't be fooled by all the movement. Ask yourself, what exactly was working for Charlo? And if Charlo was able to shorten that left hook in the 11th round and drill Harrison, why wasn't he working on that earlier in the fight? Why is it that Harrison's punches time and time again were much straighter than Jamel Charlo's, right? Charlo's in his late 20s. Late 20s. I'm just surprised that Charlo looks as anxious in the ring, which with as much wasted movement in the ring. Right? I, I just got the feeling that against a fighter a little bit more athletic than Tony Harrison, first off, let me say this. I'm not convinced Charlo would win a third fight against Tony Harrison. Right? That's the first thing. The uh, second thing is I'm just surprised that, like his brother against Matt Korobov, Jamel Charlo couldn't make the adjustments earlier. It's as if he was too excited in the ring to be analytical. You know, a guy comes out with a good jab and it catches you by surprise in the first fight. In the second fight, aren't you going to have figured out how to get by the guy's jab? 
Not only that, if it's very important to Tony Harrison to be first in exchanges with an opponent, aren't you going to expect that and be ready to counter him and do things like that? So make no mistake, Jamel Charlo is the champ at 154 pounds. I think he's vulnerable. I'll even go further. You saw Virgil Ortiz, young guy, destroy Brad Solomon, drop Solomon for the first time in his career. Right? You saw that level of explosiveness where Virgil Ortiz is outside the pocket, then he jumps in, like Jamel Charlo. The difference, though, and you see it in the Solomon fight, is Ortiz always seems to keep his head. Right? When Ortiz dives in, you notice he's analytical and he's changing angles. He'll actually stop throwing punches to reset. To throw a particular hand at a particular angle. Now in boxing today, right? I'm just telling you, boxing's a young man's game. I'm surprised at how long the run has been for several fighters. Demetrius Andrade's in his 30s. Right? His 30s. The Charlo brothers are almost 30. Right? The new guard, and I know, Virgil Ortiz is not at 154. Right? I get it. But the new guard is going to gain weight. And they're going to be at 154 sooner or later. Right? What I want the new generation to do is to look at the guys who came before them who are successful right now. Canelo. Right? How old was Canelo when he picked up titles at these weight classes? So I'm just telling you some of these fighters right at 29, 30, 31 have flaws. Right? Don't make adjustments. They have a formula that works for them. But they're not what I call adaptive reactive. Right? I believe Terrence Crawford against Tony Harrison would have shown up and would have said, okay, this guy's jab's a problem and he needs to be first. Right? If I change the angle on him quickly, if I pivot quickly, if I play games with the angles on my punches, right? Maybe I start throwing a wide left hook. Then I wait for the right time and I shorten the punch. I might be able to get there first. Right? What wouldn't happen is Crawford losing the first fight and then, in my opinion, losing the second fight even with the early knockdown. I know this is not the way the judges saw it. Until that last round, right? The 11th round of the second fight. It wouldn't take Crawford that long to land a prime counter left hook if Tony's open to it at certain angles. That's how I see it. Um, again, I congratulate Jamel Charlo, but look, this is not a fan site. This is a gambling site. I'm just levying um, criticism. So if Charlo fights a guy who you feel can change the angles on him and is adaptive reactive, with regard to his brother, the hitman at 160, right? I would take Andre over him for precisely that reason, right? I understand some of the highlights, their opponents look like they're caught in tsunamis, right? The opponent drowns. Both of these guys will come in, open up, land big shots, take out an opponent. No question about it. I remember the Charles Hatley fight. Right? Just sucked in and stuff like that. But just like Harrison didn't fall for Charlo's rhythm and was able to block that right hand, was able to set the pacing of the encounters by having a jab that Charlo kept running into, I believe other world-class fighters might be able to pull that off. Right? That's how I see it. 
Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.